Hey guys, this is Cruise Roy again, and we're going to have another little video up in the top, up this way. Um, what we're going to talk about today, this is the Spark, as you all know, and a normal Spark battery. Okay, so we're going to put this aside. What I got, I can show you in this camera too, but that's going to be a blurry camera. You're going to see a lot better than any other camera. I put a X on this battery because I can't get it to do anything. It died. And um, <clears throat> this is what a normal one should do. If you pull it out of the spark, you push it once, hold it, and it turns on. This one's at a level two. I'm going to shut it off. Okay. Now, the only way you can test voltage here is if you turn it on. Like if I turn it on like that and I test the voltage, I'll see how much voltage there is. And what happens when you charge these for uh, too long of a time, I mean, not too long of a time, but if you store these for too long of a time, sorry about that, they can go dead. And uh, sometimes, DJI at least this time has a wake up clause in there that even though you're pushing the button like this one and you're getting nothing, you put it on the charger for about 30 minutes and it starts to blink. So do that first. <clears throat> Put your Spark battery on a charger for 30 minutes. Let me just show you the Spark battery on a better film. We're getting thunder. I hope I can do this before it blows up. Alright, so what's nice about the Spark, you don't have to rip this apart and have a big pile of garbage and battery cells. So I've done one before. I'm going to do it again. See if we can get this up and running. I'm going to show you the pinout on this. But you can talk to this battery through the EV2300 and I use Arduino cords, the pins, you can see they got nice little pins and I can either stick them, solder them to a board or I can actually stick them into these little slots. All right, I got a Phantom 4 battery I'm going to do too but today we're going to talk about the Spark battery. Like I said, nothing. All right. And while I got it here, here we go. Here's the Spark battery with the X on it. It's now charging. All right, we're going to slide this one on the charger. And like I said, if you wait a little bit, it should pop up. If it doesn't, it's dead. All right, so the other one's almost charged. It's going on the fourth light, fourth light. but this one's completely dead. Like I said though, try it for about 30 minutes. I've already tried this one. That's why it's had an X on it. It's been on the shelf for a long time. So we're gonna take it off. Alright. Yeah, we just do a few things here. Alright, so like I said, even if you get little pins and stuff you can stick in here and you want to do a multimeter test, you're not gonna get crap out of this. Uh, later on I'll show you uh, how. Alright, let me show you the pinouts first of all. I printed this out. Here's the spark battery. We'll put it right there so you can see it. Alright, I'm going to show you that. Here's the pinout. You got the the clock data, and then you have the regular data, and of course your grounds are right aside of it, and the two powers are in the pins. <clears throat> the problem is it's only this power negative. If you're looking down at the battery, it's the left hand side. These are the only two we need to deal with. All right. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like all hooked up. But well, we're going to do one now, okay? So, if you got your 2300, I'm sorry if I'm looking any other way, but I'm looking at the camera. You got your 2300, all right? We know the black on this one is the ground. They have all weird colors, but where'd that battery go? Here's the battery with the X. All right, so the ground we need is right near the clock. So if you push these in here gentle, oh, I'm going to kind of show you, I mean some people use a little piece of, um, can't get it right here, they use like a, a thin sheet of metal, but watch it, you don't want to poke the lipos in there so that's the ground all right the next one I'm gonna pull out is 
the SMBC, the clock. The clock's all the way, if you're looking down at the battery, it's all the way down this end. All right. So hopefully I got it in there right. And the problem with this, even though we have it in, when I open up the TRB2300, it just reads all zeros. Um, it has to have some kind of voltage going through this thing, and if the battery's dead, it's dead. All right, so this is the SMBD, the data, which is all the way to the right-hand side, if you're looking down at the battery. All right. Now I can try it. All right. It's, it's hooked up. We're on the uh, computer here. Let me minimize my fat head. And we're going to open up TRB at 2300. We're going to see what's going to happen. I'll see if it picks it up and it communicates with the battery. But see what you're getting here? You're getting all zeros. I can't unseal the pack. I can't do any logs. Let me do a restart. I can't do nothing. It's pretty much dead, you know. They say you can talk back and forth to the chip, but the spark, I don't think you can. It needs some kind of voltage because I can't talk to the I can't talk to the spark battery right now with the TRB2300. So let me show you something else. Let me close this off. Open my big fat head again. All right. So I have two more of those Areno cords with the alligator clips with the wire stripped. I don't like cutting them off because I like saving them. Positive and negative. Now what's the positive and negative hooked up to? My favorite C240 Duo. The reason why is I can bring up, I'm going to do it right now in front of the screen because otherwise I'll get glare later. If you go through the menu you have program select, lithium, NICAD, acid, user settings, extra functions, load memory, lithium battery, but now we'll go to, oops sorry wrong one, back up, I think it's under NICAD, alright, I messed up boys, hold on for a second, we got program select, oh okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me get back to it now. It's program select, um, crap. User settings, extra functions, sorry, you got to go to extra fun functions on this. Sorry, I was losing my mind, I should have wrote that down so I'd remember. Hit enter, it's going to bring you these different menus. Battery status, battery IR lithium battery, digital power. This is what we want. And if I hit enter, I'm going to set it for 11.4. I hope you can see that. 11.4 at 1 amp. Patrick rep recommends 0 0.5, but I'm going to go 1 amp because I want to get this thing going. Alright, so anyways, before I even start this charger up, we have to go back to the spark battery. Now on the pinout, again you'll notice that the two center ones are power, but we want the one closest over here on the on the left hand side. Oh I'm sorry. Let me change this out. I, because I need the power, I'm gonna use the ground on the other side for the 20, EV2300. I messed that one up, so... Alright, so now... My yellow is ground, so the gray is ground. So ground, I want to be next to the clock. It won't work on the other side, I don't know why. And now, the white wire, we want positive, which is one of the centers. But we want them both connectors near the left hand side. I don't know why it doesn't work on the other side, but it works on this side. Alright, I'm looking up there again. We have 
I'm going to try to put it up like this, but sometimes little pins fall out. We have no communication on this battery whatsoever. Let me push the buttons, nothing. All right. I'm over here at the charger. I'm going to push and hold enter. And we're going to start the battery. And we'll see what happens. All right. So let me go back over here. This thing's possibly got no voltage at all on it. So let me minimize my face. Let's open up TRB. See if there's enough. Oop. Opening it twice. Alright, there's still nothing in here. To even read, let me reload. Just trying to play with the button. I'm going to go into log. I'm going to pick how many times. I'm going to start logging. Sorry, I need an interval time, and then click on start logging. See, the, the cells are all saying zero. There's no life so far to that. So let me put this back down. I'm going to bring my multimeter over. I'm going to bring over a multimeter, set it for 20 volts. I just want to make sure I put my double eyes on. Small things. Alright, I'm going to check what's coming out of here. I got 1148 coming out of here. So let me move that. Alright, we're still pushing nothing. What I want to do is I'm going to shut off TRB. put my big mug on the screen again um, I'm just gonna pull I'm gonna stop it I want to pull the power supplies to make sure I have a good connection Guess what we got? Alright. We got some kind of life going on here. It's not the perfect lights. We got the single light of death. So, let's hide the pin out for a second. Let's go back to TRB. Minimize my fat head. Let's go to TRB2300. Let's see if we're seeing any visible signs of life. Here we go. We're starting to get some life here. All right. If you look at the cells, 2217, 2753, 2940. So that's the problem with this battery. I mean, you can see it right here. All right. The pack is sealed. Um, let's go into... I want to get this uh, put over here. Let's go over to register page. Now here's two things to look for. Hit read register. All right. We look for discharge and charge. You got charge, discharge, and I don't know what the P charge means, but these are usually enabled when it's charging, so they're not. 
The other thing is you have an SS and you have a PF. All right, you have these two issues on this battery. So we're still drawing in some voltage here. Let's open up the log. Let's do some intervals of five seconds. Let's hit logging the battery. All right, look at the cell count. We got 2300, 2700, and 2900. The problem was the 2373. And we'll keep an eye on this to see, see if you notice it starts going up and down. Don't be afraid of that because it's bringing one up as it brings the other down. But if you see it not doing anything, check your connections on the battery. But now, if you, you feel like you're not really getting a good charge, this might take a while. So I'm going to try to keep the film rolling. It might be too long. But let's go back to the SRB. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we, let's read it really quick. All right. It's given us 24. 27 29 let's stop the read okay look over here you've got you got the permanent fail and the SS is a battery failure all right so let's unseal this battery and see if it goes doesn't have a lot of voltage you know it's a zero right here because it's not reading on a chip yet it took me a few times on the last one to unseal it Okay, this one was first try. It's unsealed, all right? This is what I'm going to do. If you look over here, we're looking at the recharge, the charge, and discharge. It's still not enabled. It's usually this one and this one when it's charging properly, all right? So we got it unsealed. The first thing you want to do is clear the PF, all right? It needs to be unsealed, but it is unsealed. But Oh, it sealed itself, sorry must have rebooted so it's gonna unseal itself it says right here unsealing wait still got a light blinking I don't want to move any of the wires be real careful those little things I mean people use flat pieces of metal you know like pieces of copper and you can slide them in there if they're the right size the best thing to have is the male connector um, all right, we're starting to get a double light out of this thing, but she's still not charging right. But the pack is unsealed. We're going to hit clear PF. The PF is still enabled. Let's clear the permanent fail. Let's do read the register. Okay, permanent fail is gone. The SS is still hanging around. That's a hardware problem. So, we have the pre-charge. I think it's pre-charge, charge, and discharge. All right, they're both lit up now. I still have this problem with the SS. So I think it's because we still don't have enough voltage in here. We're not up to three, so there's still a hardware issue. Sorry about that, folks. That's my dryer buzzing. Um, okay, so let's seal the pack. Don't want anything to happen here. Um, you can also manually toggle these you know what I mean so if you went into the advanced commands and you went to BK tools they do have these toggle pre-charge toggle charge toggle discharge and you can also reset the chip as of right now I really don't want to reset the chip it seems to be starting to go through its charge phase all right like I said I'm only running one amp uh, it's like a 2 amp or 3 amp charge with the factory uh, DJI charger for the Spock. All right. We'll put the little guy over here for a while. He can hang out. He can check out his battery. Um, so let's go back to the main page. Go back to the registers. And the SS is still there. All right. Pack is sealed. Let's go back to log. Let's watch some cells. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna shut the logging off. I'm gonna change it to every 10 seconds because it's gonna take a while to do this. I'll probably just speed this up. But I reactivated it. We got 267, 285, 299. So we got one cell that's almost there. And I'm running one amp. All right. 
So I do have a couple of Phantom 4 batteries that are coming to me uh, that they crapped out and they usually have the same problem unless they fall in water. If they fall in water they're dead. Um, the reason I took the cells is because hopefully I can build an Inspire battery with the Phantom 4 cells. Um, that would be pretty cool. But with the Spark battery here, like I said, without taking this apart, we can't get at the 11.4 cells, the three cells. We can't charge them individually, so we have to hope for the best that the battery management system in this battery will take over and it'll start, you know, balancing out the, the, uh, the cell count, right? Because we're just piping in digital power to this. Even though it's a LiPo, always wear glasses, safety glasses preferably. These are just glasses. Um, <clears throat> wear safety glasses if you have to wear a mask because you're putting digital power in this, which a LiPo, and a, you know, high voltage LiPo, they don't know the difference as long as it's power. Christ, if you had a car battery, you could pump in 12 volts into a Spark battery. Just do it slowly like a welder. Just keep popping it in there, but I don't recommend that. I don't recommend playing with these cells at all, tearing them apart. But I know the Spark battery and the Mavic battery. The Mavic, unfortunately, Mavic Pro, you can't talk to the cells outside the battery with the 2300. But you can talk to the Spark. And I think the Phantom 4... Maybe, maybe not. I don't have one yet to mess with. I have good batteries and they work out fine, but um, to have a crappy battery, we're going to start from crap like we're doing here. All right, while I'm shooting the crap here, we got cell 3 is 3031, which is good. Uh, cell 1 is still junk. We're at 27 and 28 on the next cell. Now, see, these LiPos had juice to them. They had power. You know, they probably all had... You know, one of them probably had 2.5. So, did it kill the cell? Maybe. It was just in storage. It just went on the charge. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Probably someone's going to comment that, you know, those are bad batteries, blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever. So, this is a test. And um, it looks like we're 2.9 on another one. But what's going to happen once this baby gets up to 3.0? we can go back into sounds like it's pouring out like a bastard outside uh, we, oh, let me go back to the main screen so we got the main screen here we're gonna shut off BK tools because we're not gonna toggle any charging things right now we're not even gonna reset the chip uh, boom we're gonna go to SBS all right we still have an SS in here let's read the data here all right, we got 272930. So we're getting there, folks. Sorry if the video's long, but it's just going to be. Because I want to show you this works. I still have it hooked up. It's actually doing a double charge. I'm going to be right back because I need to kill the dryer. All righty. I'm back. It's supposed to tell me that the dryer is, you know, it's just doing its tumble crap. New technology, you gotta hate it. So, anyways, like I said, we still have an SS problem here. That's a hardware problem, from what I understand, from Patrick. Um, I don't know if you went into advanced commands. BK Tools is there. A toggle switch for that no but there is a reset chip all right you got the clear and you got the reset chip we're not gonna go that far yet we're gonna wait for this guy to get over three volts at least 3.3 on each cell so just relax and hang out um, let's go back I mean, if you want to look at the flash data, we could do that, but I have this on read. So let's go to BK Tools, Flash Editor, we come back, the read flash. We got to unseal the battery again. It should automatically unseal the Spark battery.
pack is still sealed. There we go, it's unsealed. It's going to read the data off the chip. Let me take a look at that. Let me move the camera over here. There's my favorite charger. We're running digital power at 11.4 volts. You can set it for 10 if you want, but I put it for 11.4 and at 1 amp. Let's go back to the battery. Woo okay. All right, so here's all the data. I'm just checking it out. I don't understand all of it, but I understand some of it. Permanent fail. Showing what happened during the fail. So it had to get below 2200 milliamp hours to shut off to create a uh, permanent fail. From what it looks like, I might be wrong. Somebody make a comment who's ever using the software. So, <clears throat> let's go back, let's read a register. We still have the hardware problem. I'm gonna reset the read, still there. Let's go over to the log. And we're gonna reset this to 10 and restart. So we have a fresh look here. So we got 28, 29, 29, 70, 3090. So we're moving but slow. And like I said, to get it started sometimes, if you see nothing voltage, play with that button. It kind of tricks something and it starts working. All right. So cell one is increasing, cell two is increasing, and cell three is increasing. You can up the amps if you want, if you're crazy, but we're almost there. It does so many milli, millivolts, you know, per so many seconds, you know what I mean? So anyways, while we're here, messing around, let me show you in the camera. Here's the spark battery. This one had the X on it. Charger's lights green. I'm gonna pull it out of the charger. Let's see what this battery's doing. Here's ba battery number X. All right. Problem is we gotta run this battery and then discharge it and recharge it again because it's probably not balanced properly. So what I'm going to do is take Sparky here, make up a little bit. Take Sparky here. I'm going to put in the crappy battery. Make sure it doesn't fail. I don't have the controller on, and there you go, full lights, no errors, I'm inside, everything's on, shut it down, off it goes. Just to show you, battery X. I know what you're saying, it's not the battery X we're playing with right now. Move it over to this new battery X. But I can clean off that X, clean off my marks here for denotation. Sell it for a couple of bucks because it's good. Alrighty, so let's go back to the program. What do we got so far? The log keeps going. I'm just rebooting it. So we got two cells at 3. 3.008. 3121. It's cell 1 we got a problem with. So let's just keep going. Let's go back to SBS. Like I said, we're still under 3, and that's when this goes away. Pack is unsealed. 
let me hit the registers all right the SS is still there but we still have a voltage problem and actually on two cells from this register here let's read this all right we got two at three we got one two eight eight two so we're gonna drag this out a little more we'll go around is the EV 2300 spark the battery X I don't want to move it because the little wires while we're doing this I'll pull this up again there's the magic code of the pins all right the six pins the clock negative positive positive negative data all right you can use this negative for the data and the clock you use these two only to add digital power to this and there's like a picture and I already showed you live <clears throat> all right put Mr. Spark there for I know people are gonna be bored out of their mind with this big long video but again tools the pin out now on the TR3, I mean TRB2300, you're supposed to be able to type the battery information into that area and it'll get you the pin out that I'm showing you on the picture. But the spark battery is so tiny, I cannot see that information. So, let me grab my phone. See if it'll focus in good enough. All right. Look at the picture. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but it's MB one dash fourteen eighty MAH dash eleven point four V supposedly that's what we're gonna put in the pinout page all right so it looks like I'm gonna be in the way MB1 MB1 it's a dash 1480 1480 M-A-H, M-A-H, turn on the picture again, M-A-H, it's a dash, 11.4, 11.4, and a V, and let's click get pinout. So I don't know where it goes if it's looking, but... It didn't show up it usually shows up right here but that's the type of number you're looking for um, I'm gonna slowly re remove the voltage but I do think that's part of the battery now so that part I'll have to ask again but that's how I was told to look for it all right so anyways that's where the pinout is let's go back to the log real quick I'm going to change the calibration time to five seconds. I'm going to shut off the logging. We'll turn the logging back on. So all, all I'm doing is I'm letting it start up. I mean, I can save the log or load it. Let me turn this back on again. It's going to reload. All right, so now if you look at it, we got a 3521, 3567, 3585. So the BMS kicked in. And... It started kicking in the battery. So, let's go back to the SBS. We still have an SS hardware here. Pack is unsealed. I'm going to hit clear PF again. Any permanent fails. All right. Hit read register again, and it's gone. All right. The permanent fail and the hardware fail are both gone. The charge is eliminated now. The pre-charge is gone. So, we've gone up high enough to the cells. Let me read the cell count over here. 
We have a cell count of 35, 36, 37. Battery style, the cycle count, if I'm correct, this battery's only been charged once or it's because I cleared it and it went back to zero. But I never hit a reset chip. All right, so we're gonna shut this off. We cleared the two errors. The charge and the discharge are re-enabled to work. All this, I do not know, so don't ask me damn nothing. Um, the advanced commands again, all this stuff I'm still working on. The PK tools, you can open it up. You can do the data flash, you know, shows you all the info. I'm not uppity up on that yet. Um, but what we're going to do is we're all above three here. So, let me shut off the TRB. Say bye to Patrick. Bye. Do you really want to? Yep, I want to go. All right, let me open up my fat face again. But actually, I'm going to lower it because in the video, I can put this other video in here. All right, let me minimize that again. Ooh, I killed it. I'm going to go back in here. Where am I? I'm right here. Let me make myself smaller again because I need room for a video here. All right. So now what we're going to do, let me move Sparky. Here's the uh, charger. I'm going to kill it. All right. You're like, oh, no, it's going to get all screwed up now. All right. So that's off. Here's all the wiring. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pull all these wires out. Say sayonara. And like I said, these are little Arduino cords that I got from an Arduino drone board, believe it or not. All right. Lights are dead. This is the X battery. Here's the test, guys. Here's the Spark stock charger. Here's this. I'm going to put it into... doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it into cell bank 1. And there you go. All right. That's what we go. We got going on. It's alive now. Originally, you knew I couldn't touch any of these marks. I couldn't get it to go. Um, his, uh, uh, sorry. Here's his brother. All right. I had to mark the wiring. Be careful. You don't want to short it out. You short it out. You just hurt the chip. Another X battery. I got two of them in today, and they're both gonna be fixed by the end of the day. It took about as long as this video to hook you up. All right, one last look. All right, we got the EV2300. We got the C240 Duo Charger. The Spark battery that was dead. All righty. So it's going to continue charging. Don't really need to watch that. This is Cruise Roy. Have fun, play around, and always tinker. It keeps this thing up here going, especially when it's old. And be safe out there with the COVID-19. And this is Cruise Roy, and again, I am out of here.